G'day viewers. In this short segment, we'll talk about how hosts and routers are combined in the internet for the purpose of routing. Now, this topic is really just to provide a little bit of a bridge because we've talked about routing and nodes, but we've also talked about forwarding and said that there is a distinction between hosts and routers. Routers route and hosts don't, and we would like to glue them together into a network. Just to recap that slightly and remind you what's going on, here's what I've told you before. In the internet, hosts on the same network have IP addresses that come from the same prefix. We do this in order to be able to scale routing and assign addresses. And the way hosts handle the issue of routing is that they send any traffic that is not for a local host that has to go off the network they just send it to the nearest router. They don't need to know what the router does with it. Their rule is simply, if you don't know, if it's not on the local network, send it to the router. Routers, on the other hand, have to talk to one another and discover the routes to use to get packets to every address in the internet. And the way they do this and implement this is that they use a longest prefix, max, longest prefix matching algorithm on their forwarding table to decide what next hop to send a packet to based on their address. Okay, so let's try and put these pieces together. Here is how hosts and routers would be combined in a network. Now the networks I've drawn have uh, pictures here like a router, here's a router A, and that router has links that connect it to the rest of the network. That's fine, that's what mostly what we've seen with our pictures of graphs. The dots represent all of the different routers which are doing the, the routing. But we also have hosts in these networks, so where do they fit? Well, the hosts are attached to the routers. Now often there is like a switch, a LAN switch here, so that we can attach multiple different hosts to the same LAN. Uh, as far as the router is concerned, all of these hosts are reachable over that one wire or wireless link. And uh, even though there are multiple hosts here, it's really a single network, a single prefix that they're all representing. Whether it's one host or many, they're all on the same prefix. So if I just draw that as the topology, this is the situation I have. All of these other nodes before A and B and E really are uh, what we see, saw in the other diagrams. Here's maybe a portion of it. E and B go off to the rest of the network. But what we do to add the hosts is we add them by adding a link from a router towards one prefix which represents all of the different hosts. And that way we've connected the host to our network. Now what do we do? Well now all we do is proceed with the routing algorithms exactly as I've described and they all just work. The routers, what they're going to do now that they're connected to this prefix to represent the host is they will advertise the IP prefixes for the hosts. It will just go out instead of a single node address, it's a prefix. This fits by the way with the way they advertise their own addresses. Uh, a router address, an individual address, is really like a slash 32 prefix. It's most specific. It's a block of addresses of, with one address in it. When they do this, all of the routers will be able to find a path to all of the different prefixes that have been sent around, and this will allow them to find a path to all of the different hosts. Great! The hosts are also able to fit into this equation because they have this simple routing rule that uh, says essentially they don't route. If it's not for someone on the local network where they can reach directly, then they simply send to the router and the router knows the route to all of the other hosts in the network. And we're done. Uh, this is really just a little bit of glue so that you can be clear on how we plug our routing algorithms together with the host forwarding behaviors we've seen in IP.